Next, I'd like to discuss with you the concept of DEA for data envelopment analysis. It's one of the more interesting and actually more complicated linear programming models out there. Charles and Cooper and a co-author first published about data development and analysis back in the late 70s in the European Journal of Operational Research. The concept is, is like this. What, what they intended to do was to look at the efficiency of DMUs. A DMU stands for a decision-making unit. They could be departments in a hospital or departments in an in a academic uh, uh, university or McDonald's outlets or hotels or banks or, or anything. Um, what they did then is, is track the efficiency of these DMUs uh, in comparison with one another. The nice thing about it is you can compare over uh, many attributes. So for example, let's take this first graph here. Let's say that we're comparing these DMUs I've got plotted here on input versus output. And what we'd like to see is where the theoretical efficiency frontier lies. Which ones in this graph are efficient relative to the others? Well, let's take a look. This one right here, let's say this one here, is more efficient than that one there because it gets more output with less input. You see? So anything out here on this front here, out there, those are the efficient ones, and the inefficient ones are down here because they're clearly dominating. Let's look at this another way. Let's say we've got two outputs, output one and output two. And let's assume that these are DMUs that have exactly the same input. Which ones are the efficient ones? Where's the theoretical frontier? Well, clearly, the ones out here, these, are more efficient than, than these. Because you get more output uh, in, in both directions. Clearly, this one is, is better than, than this one. It strictly dominates it. Well, what DEA tries to do is not just look at what's strictly dominating, but also look to see if they can create a dummy DMU that would dominate. So for example, let's take this one here, these three. It's not strictly dominated by either of those. But if we take a weight of 50-50, okay, on this one and a weight of 50 on that one, See that? Weight of 50-50 on this one and this one and create a dummy DMU. That's not a real DMU, it's a dummy. Let's create that. And then with a 50-50 weight, we can see that that one's dominated. And then we can say, yeah, there's evidence that that one is relatively inefficient. So that's the idea. Let's take an example of let's say we've got three academic departments that we're comparing. And for this example, let's say that marketing is the one that we're evaluating relative to management and accounting. Okay, well, first let's talk about the outputs. What do academic departments produce? Well, one thing they produce is SCHs, student credit hours. Let's say this year management produced 6,000 student credit hours, marketing produced 5,000, accounting produced 8,000. Research, papers, management produced 40, marketing 30, accounting 10, graduates 450, 400, and 300. On the input side, faculty, 12, 9, and 14. 
Later on, we're going to change it to 15. But for now, for now, let's stick with nine. Budget 300,000, 320, and 400, respectively, for management and marketing and accounting. Okay, is there any evidence that marketing is inefficient? Well, they've got the lowest SCHs. Their research productivity is not bad. Marketing has 400 grads, which is better than the county. But uh, they've got the best on FTE. Okay, so let me tell you this. If you're the best on any attribute, you're never going to be found inefficient. So if, if you wanted to manipulate this model, you just have to make sure that you've got a criteria and attribute thrown in that you're the best on, and you'll never be found to be inefficient. So it can be manipulated that way. But we're assuming that uh, whoever is running the study is, is neutral. All right, so let's model this as an LP. First, the objective function, I'm not going to say anything about it right now. We'll come back to it. Minimize E. You got three, actually four variables, the weights and E is a, is a variable. Uh, weight on management, weight on marketing, weight on accounting, sum of the weights equal to one. Then you've got your input constraints, or sorry, these are the output constraints. You take the 6,000, which is what management scored on uh, SCHs times their weight plus 5,000 times the weight of marketing plus 8,000 times the weight of accounting has to be greater than or equal to 5,000. That was for marketing. We put 5,000 marketing score on the right hand side because they're the one that's under evaluation. Okay, and we do the same thing for, for the other three outputs. Uh, 40, this is research times weight of management, 30 for marketing, weight on marketing plus 10 weight on accounting greater than or equal to 30 and the same for grads works exactly the same way this is a little different model than the one that you've got in your book I like it better but it's up to you which one you you know use for your project now on the input side works a little different for the inputs you take the 12 the 9 and the 14, this is for a faculty FTE. But now, on the right hand side, we take 9 times that variable E. Notice that E is in the objective function. Okay? And 300, 320, 400 times the weights again, less than or equal to 320 times E. Okay? Now, if the result, when we run this thing, if E is equal to 1 when we run it, then there's no evidence that marketing is inefficient. And if that's the case, the weight on marketing will be 1, and the weight on accounting and management will be zeros. But if E is less than 1 when we run this, then there is evidence that marketing is inefficient. Okay. What that implies then is that the weight on marketing will be zero and the weight on management and weight on accounting together will sum to one. It might be 50-50 like I had in the example. Now, I'm going to post the uh, Excel spreadsheet on WebCT. I'll go through the video on that. But what we'll see when we run this original model with the nine, E is going to be E is going to be one, and the weight on marketing is going to be one. So there is no evidence at nine. But when we switch it to fifteen, what we're going to see is that management strictly dominates marketing. This is better than this. This is better than this. This is better than this. Twelve is better than fifteen because fewer faculty is better. Three hundred is better than three twenty. So what we'll find there is an E that will be less than one when we change it to 15. E will be less than 1 and the weight on management will be 1 because it strictly dominates marketing. So check out the next video uh, on Excel where I'll run the LP model for this.